Hebrews 11. That's no coincidence. There's 66 books in the Bible. There's thousands of verses. There's thousands of chapters. Let me tell you, God was working. He works if you open up your eyes and you see it. It's not a coincidence. Don't you see God is real? He is real, and it was amazing. You take advantage of those moments and you say, God, I know you're here right now. I know you're here in this. So I'll tell you, Brother Terry said, no way, Brother Terry, no way. Uh, I told him what happened. Of course, he said, amen. But today, my message is be more available. So this is kind of me preaching to myself, the step that I'm making, that I've already told y'all I'm making, but it just God keeps on talking to me, being more available for Him, being more available for God. And that's what He's been speaking to me about. And as Christians, we have to be more available if we want to receive the blessings, if we want to receive the hope, if we want to receive the peace, if we want to receive that. What uh, Jesus, we got to be more available for Jesus. That's, 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 that's simple. It is. So, as I was reading the scriptures, Brother Terry tags, I'm reading and I'm putting down all the thoughts in my head. So, we'll go ahead and read Hebrews 11, 6 through 7. But, without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not, uh, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world, and became a heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as I stand before the congregation today, Lord, give me the words that you put on my heart this week and last night, God. May you touch somebody else's heart like it's touched mine so much more today, God. I pray if somebody don't know you, that they don't leave this house today, Lord, that they get on their knees, don't even wait to the end of service, and they accept you into their heart, God. I pray today if somebody's on the wrong road, on the wrong path, that the day that they make a decision to be more available for you and start living and working for you, God. And we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And as I told y'all a minute ago, it's, I don't know what it is. I, I usually am not a very emotional person now, Michelle. Now, she may say I'm a little sensitive, but as far as crying and stuff, I'm not. But it's amazing when you get start to get closer to God, you just get emotional. He can break down even a big old man like Brother Dennis. Like, <laughs> but uh, I guess there's so much going on, and we've been through so much, but I'm so blessed at the same time. So it's just a blessing to have God's love in, in the hard times and to know, to, to walk by faith in, in the unknown that is uh, ahead of us. Uh, we're, just, we're just excited about it. But Friday night we went, we got to meet the director of missions. He's an awesome man, Brother Stan and his wife. And as Michelle was saying, the... Uh, telling you, you know, about our testimony and stuff. It was so powerful up there. But we got a real good connection with Brother Chris Young and his wife. We got to sit by them. And they have a son named Corey. I don't know if anybody knows who they are. I believe some of you may. When he was six or seven years old, they found out he had a muscle degenerative disease. And he, uh, I'm going to share the shoulder out, so I must not have said it right. All right, I can't say all the good words. So Y'all know what I mean. But uh, it's put him in a wheelchair. In 2006, he almost died. And they got to tell that testimony. But that boy was sitting there and he had a smile on his face the whole time. When I sat there and looked at him, I seen God. You felt God just sitting beside him and tears were rolling down his face. And I thought, my goodness, what a powerful testimony he had. But you know what? We all have testimonies. And next Sunday night, uh, I want you to do a testimony night. So I want, if anybody has God put on your heart a testimony, we're going to do it next Sunday night. You stand up here and give your testimony. But sometimes a testimony is more powerful than what a preacher can preach. So if God puts something on your heart, get with me. We'll line you up and do it. Maybe this will take several Sunday nights for it to go through. But Hebrews 11, 6 and 7. To be more available, what do you got to do? You've got to make sacrifices in your life. To make sacrifices, you've got to have faith. So to be more available, you've got to be have sacrifices. And to have sacrifices, you've got to have more faith. And what does that all equal? It equals blessings. It equals power. It equals strength. It equals courage. It equals so much. God will bless you when you become more available for Him. So today, what I want you to look at in your life, what sacrifices can you make to get closer to God? What can you do in your life? What can you cut back? in your life to put God in that place. If you are not putting God first, then what are you putting first? That's what you've got to think about. We've got to be honest with ourselves. So Hebrews uh, verse 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. So if you don't have the faith, you're not pleasing God today. You've got to have that strong faith. And like I said, you're going to hear me say this multiple, multiple times. To have faith, you've got to have the sacrifice and be more available for God. And your faith will strengthen but then you look at, the, uh, at Noah, what it says about Noah. He being warned of God, of not, of not seen as yet, but moved with fear. We need to move with fear more. We need to fear God more. We need to, to fear God. 
But it says, by the which he condemned the world and became a hair of righteousness by his faith. By faith, Noah saved himself and his family and, of course, all the animals in the world. Thank God for a faithful man. We need to be faithful like Noah. We need to have that faith because what? It is impossible to please God if you don't have the faith. If you look in Luke uh, 16, verse 10 and 13, it says, He that is faithful in the least also is faithful in the much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So what is that saying right there? You've got to be faithful in the little things in your life. And what's the little things to be faithful about? Coming to church. We only spend four hours a week in church. So that would say that's something easy for a Christian to do is to be at church. Four hours, Monday morning, 8 to 12, you only spend half a day and you've already dedicated four hours to your work. And guess what? You're going to have to work the rest of the week. We only spend four hours at church. We need to be faithful to God in the least. So when you're faithful in the least, you'll be faithful in the big things. So God's not going to call you to do something great if you're not faithful in the least. He's not going to put a big priority on your life or send you overseas. He's not going to call you into some kind of ministry to do something if you ain't faithful in the little things. So today, be faithful in the little things so He knows that you'll be faithful in the big things. He will bless you. Verse 13 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. Yet cannot, ye cannot serve God and man. What's it saying there? No servant can serve two masters. So if you're not being more available for God, you've obviously got another master in your life. You're obviously serving something else, and you need to put God in that place. You can't serve two masters today. If you want to be more available for God, you've got to make the sacrifices. And to make the sacrifices, you've got to have more faith. And to have more faith, you've got to put God first. He said you're either going to hate one or you're going to hate the other. So today, we, we, will cut, we will cut ties. We will go anywhere. We will, at the, if somebody takes us, come here and do this, we will be there. When it comes to church, we put it last on why? You know, that's why we've got a big list of things to do. It ain't got done. That, since Daddy's been down for two weeks, nothing's moved. We got to be faithful. This is God's holy temple, folks. And it's all of our jobs to take care of this temple. God put this here for us to bring in the lost. This is a place of happiness. This is a place of joy. This is a place of uh, where we come and we cry together, we laugh together, and we grow closer together. This is not a place of bitterness and anger and hate and back talking. This is a place of love, and we grow closer together and we grow closer to God. That's what this is for, and in doing that, we got to work hard in this church as a whole. It says we make up the whole body of Christ. If my right arm ain't working, then I can't, I can't do as much work, can I? That's kind of like a congregation. If only a few people are doing something, there's not enough work going to get done. We can have so many great programs in this church. We can do so much in this church if people will step up. What about people who's already signed up and ain't doing their position? That's what we need to get to, amen? I told you, God has put it on my heart that we have got to get serious about God. We have got to be busy. It's been too many times in the past where so many people, how many times it says be faithful in the least? Even in my ministry, people come and shake, shake my hand and say, I've been inspired by your message. Sign me up for this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. They leave. They don't show up to church. They don't do anything. You're not being faithful. You're just being a talker. It says don't talk, but you've got to walk. So if you sign up for something, you got to do it. Or you know what? God is going to put a whooping on your butt. He's going to punish you because when you tell God that you're going to step up, when you tell the congregation you're going to step up and do something, when you get bolted in by God's people and you don't do it, you will be punished by that same God. God puts as much love into, in, into your life and you also put judgment into your life. So today we've got to stand up and be serious about God, people are dying and going to hell. What about last week in Hawaii when they got that uh, that little attack? Jimmy, you're messing me up, son. But uh, last week in Hawaii, uh, they got a text message that said 38 minutes a missile, a ballistic missile is going to hit Hawaii. It says people were sticking their kids in storm drains. People were freaking out. People were praying and repenting to God and praying to God uh, <coughs> to uh, disable them, and they were so scared. That's realistic. It can happen any day, any time. Yeah, it's going to happen. So we got to be prepared. We got to get other people prepared. Be faithful in the least. Be faithful to God. He will bless you. But it says also says he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. So somebody who thinks they're doing a little sin, you're probably going to be doing a lot of bigger sin. God says the sin is equal. So if you're living out in the world and doing things you shouldn't be doing, and you think, well, this is just something small, no, it's big in God's eyes, amen? amen. Let's move on. Uh, we got to make God our first priority. James 1.22 says, uh, let's flip over to 
James 21, 2, uh, 1, 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. How many times in most of my early life I spent listening, but I didn't spend applying to my heart. It would go in this ear, it would come out this ear, but it never went right here. But when I started applying it to my life, when I started getting into the Word, when I started praying and I started listening to what the preacher was saying, my life started changing. It started transforming. I started coming to church and actually enjoying being in church. It wasn't like it was an obligation. I had to be there. It was a blessing to be there. I wanted to be there. There was a desire. There was a hunger in me because when you start being a doer of the Word, God will start blessing you and you will start to desire to be at church. So today, we got to be doers. we got to get busy. we got to stop listening. we got to stop saying we're going to do something. And we just got to do it. Sometimes actions yeah. speak louder than words. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do it. If you tell God you're going to do it, like I said a minute ago, you need to do it or your life will start slowly falling apart. Everything around you will start falling apart. Your marriage will fall apart. Your job, your career will start falling apart. So don't play God. He don't like playing games. He likes people to be serious. And if you want to be serious, you need to make yourself more available to God. And what I say a minute ago, I told you I was going to say it a bunch. To be more available, you've got to make sacrifices in your life. And to make sacrifices, you've got to have more faith. How do you get your faith? Today. You pray to God to give you that faith. You walk by faith, not by sight. Get on fire today. We should be excited. We should be happy. We ain't been here in two weeks, and we should be just excited to be in church. We should be happy. We should be praying. I don't want to be just a normal brother Baptist. I don't want to be. I was a Baptist all my life and sitting there and just, that's it. That's it. I mean, I wasn't moving. I want people to move, not at what I say, but at what God has done in your life. He has saved you. If you are a Christian, He has saved you from hell. That is exciting. I should get an amen. I need a witness. He has saved you from hell. I'm excited that I'm going to heaven. I'm going to my granddaddy's one day. I'm going to my uncle one day. I'm going to be there, there with daddy one day. My family, my wife, and my kids, we're going to be there one day and we're going to celebrate heaven for eternity with Jesus. But you know what? There's a lot of people that's not going to heaven, so that's our job. We have got to start with Listen, it's more than just being here on Sunday morning. It's about getting out there. And if we can't get our church life and church attendance and, and things we're supposed to do in the church, how are we supposed to be witnesses outside of the walls of the church? If we can't lift our hands up and say, Amen, praise you, Jesus. If we can't come next Sunday night and give a testimony about how Jesus has saved our uh, heart, how he saved us from hell, if we can't stand up and do that, how are we going to tell the lost person that I work? How are we going to tell that person at Walmart we ain't going to do it? So we've got to get more active in church, and we've got to transform and pray. Praise Him. In James 2 also, I love the book of James, it says, uh, James 2, 17, even so, if, if it hath done not works, it is dead. Being alone, he said, faith without works is dead. So wait a minute, Brother Zach. You're telling us to work, but you can't work your way to heaven. No, listen to me. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. That's why so many denominations, they believe you can work to heaven. Uh, so many different, uh, they think you have to be really religious. You have to be a part of a, a certain group of believers to get to heaven. Jesus says, just come through me. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. You come through Jesus and he will save you. It says to get to God, you've got to go through the Son. To get to the Father, you've got to go through the Son. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to go through Jesus. But it says, even so, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So faith without works is dead. So James goes on to say in verse 18, Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. You can't show faith without works. There's many Christians today that is fooling themselves, who call themselves Christians, they may be coming to church, but they have no works to back up their Christianity. They have no works to back up what they say they are. And, it, and so James goes to say, I will show thee my faith by my works. What he's saying, he's not bragging there. He's just saying, you know what, I will show you I'm a Christian. I will show you that I have faith in Jesus by what I do for him. It yeah. will prove that you are godly and that you live and you're a true Christian by your works, by how you act outside of these walls of this church. You know, we need to act and trick people outside of here like we do in here. Well, some churches ain't like that. You know, they have a war inside the church, but we don't need to have that. We're, this is God's temple. This is God. We're not going to be viewed in heaven. We need to come together as one. We make up the body of Christ. It says, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Have more works. Now, how do you have more works? Somebody say it with me. You've got to be more available, and to be more available, you've got to make sacrifices. And to have sacrifices, you've got to have faith to make those sacrifices. So you will tell next week how much, how much faith you have by the sacrifices you make to be more available for God. You've got to, do, you've got to trim out the fat. You, maybe it's just you're on TV too much. 
maybe all of us, I'm definitely guilty of being on my phone too much. I can separate myself from that a little bit and spend more time in God's Word. Spend more time in calling y'all, saying, hey, how are y'all doing this week? Do you need anything? That's something I've got to step up to do. That's something that y'all have got to step up to do. We all can make an effort. We can start trimming the fat out and start doing more for God. So faith without works is dead. Second Thessalonians. Turn over here to and Brother Chris is on it. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of your Lord Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he had received us. So you may start getting more available in your life, and you start may making sacrifices in your life. But if you hang on to the bad company and bad people, it's not going to make a hill of beans. You're not going to advance towards the kingdom. The problem with many Christians today is they're trying to walk towards heaven, but they're hanging out with a crowd that's walking towards hell. Yeah. You can't go one way. You've got to go this way. You've got to go the straight and narrow. You don't need to go the wide way to hell. You have got to separate yourself from bad company, bad family, people that bring you down. You may not have many friends when you do it. And it's going to be hard when people start walking out of your life when you start living for Jesus. But you know what? If somebody walks out of your life, guess what? Let them walk. Quit chasing them. Quit trying to run them down. Let them walk. They don't need you. You just need God. Walk with God today. Sometimes the people you're chasing are keeping you from walking with Jesus. So today, let these people walk. Let them go. Give it to God. Separate yourself from bad company. You've got to completely separate yourself from bad company. Now, that doesn't mean Christians should look down on the people that you're separating yourself from. That would make you a judge. See, God said, I'm the only judge. Judge not lest ye be judged. Now, a lot of Christians like to use that verse. They like to use it to try to put down other Christians. But let me tell you, judge not lest ye be judged. But what you've got to do is you've got to love these people that you're walking away from. Your life will be an example to them to bring them to Christ. You get what I'm saying? But if you keep doing hanging out with them, you're saying, I approve of your drinking. I approve of your drug use. I approve of your sex outside of marriage. I approve of your uh, far away from biblical views. I approve of that. No, you got to separate yourself that but still love them and witness to them, but don't partake in what they're doing. It says it right here in the Word of God. It's not what I'm telling you. I mean, what I tell you, it ain't going to make no difference. Read what God's Word said and apply it to your life. Now, we command you in the name of Jesus not to walk with brothers that walk disorderly and not after tradition with us. Verse 11 says, For we hear there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Man, busybodies. Lord, have mercy. And you know about it, Brother Mark. Busybodies. Right down here, there's, there's, it describes busybodies as somebody who's not doing anything, but they're always constantly stirring up trouble. That's their ministry. That's not a ministry for God. It's a ministry for Satan. We have got to get away from that. We have got to walk with God. It says they're working, not at all, but are busybodies. How many times somebody says they're going to do something for God and they don't do it, but they're, they're busybodies and all of a sudden they're sinning. They're living in sin. You've got to get away from that. You've got to separate yourself from that. And you've got to start doing what God has put you the earth to do. See, a Christian, when you become a Christian, we all have to serve. We all have to follow Him. It's not just an option. He just don't say, okay, Zach, I saved you. I want you to do all the work. No, when you become a Christian, your ministry is to bring lost people to Him. Yeah. We have got to do that. Yeah. I'm a spitting preacher, folks. All right, Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yeah. What's yeah. it saying here? Go on to the next one, brother. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when you walk with God, you are led by the Spirit. Now to be led by the Spirit, you've got to be more available. And how do you become more available? Today you're going to make a sacrifice. And when you make that sacrifice, your faith will increase. And when your faith increases, guess what? You will be led by the Spirit. And it says that we bear witnesses with God's Spirit because we are His children. Now you want your children to obey, don't you? You want your children to listen to you. You want your children to grow up and be successful. See, we don't, we don't serve a God who don't want good for us. I want my kids to grow up and be successful in life. I want them to, to have a decent job, have a happy marriage, and to serve in church. That's what I want. God don't want bad for us. But if they make mistakes, that's on them. I can't, I, but I will punish them if they don't listen. I will discipline them if they don't listen. That's kind of like God. We are His children. And we, when you're a child of God and you're not living for Him, He will punish you in Amen. some way. See, a lot of people go through storms in their life, but some of the storms we bring on ourselves by our sin, by our lack of faith, by the things that we do wrong. It says that we need to be led by the Spirit. 
How many times has the Spirit tried to lead you somewhere, but you didn't do it because you was too busy? Because you didn't make yourself more available for God. He tries talking to all of us. The Holy Spirit isn't just limited to me. It just isn't limited to Daddy. It just isn't limited to the deacon. It is available for every Christian. And it will lead you. Are you following where it leads you to? Or are you scared? See, fear is the thing that Christians let hold them back. The worry, the unknown. What is tomorrow? We worry about tomorrow. Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. I've got you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm the creator of the world. I think if I can create the universe, I think if I can go die on the cross, I can take care of you. I can take care of your needs. I can take care of your finances. I can put food on your table. I can put a roof over your head. And everybody in here, I believe, has all those things. So we are blessed. We shouldn't be complaining. We shouldn't be whining because Amen. God has blessed us so much. And we need to get more excited. Like I said, I think I'm preaching to the Baptists this morning. I think that I'm preaching to some Christians who just ain't excited. We need to get excited because He is blessed. When I leave here, I'm going to be able to eat. There's people around the world who can't eat. That is a blessing. We take it for granted every day. So thank you, Jesus, for providing my needs. But God, I pray for the ones who don't have it that you provide theirs. Thank you for my blessings, Jesus. Thank you for letting me finally see you after all my years of disobedience. And I had to pay for it in a lot of ways. But thank you for bringing me into subjection to start following you. Now I'm being led by the Spirit. And like I said, it's a scary thing. And the, the unknown, we don't know where He's going to lead us. But you follow Him wherever He tells you to go. And when you do, you'll be blessed more than you've ever been blessed. Since me and Michelle have decided to do what we're going to do, Starting in February, it has brought us so, so, so much closer together. We've always had a wonderful marriage, but it just brings us closer together. And just having support of each other just makes you just love them more. And, and it makes you love your kids more. And just to open up more to them. And, and see, as parents, sometimes I believe that we kind of get a little cold and hard. And I've seen Brother Chris Young. He was sitting there being so gentle with that boy and, and his son and just so loving. I thought, sometimes I'm just a little bit too hard. You know, I, I, I discipline my kids, but sometimes I just need to open up. I open up to y'all, I need to open up to my family. We don't need to close off our family. We put up walls sometimes for the, the ones that love us the most, the ones we live with, but we, we get so close to everybody else in the church. You know, you've got to have family time too. Sometimes being more available means having more time with your family, having more time with your kids, having more time with your wife, yeah. and spending more time with them. Not only just doing just whatever, but just having fun times with them and also having your prayer and devotionals too. That's something that every marriage needs to work on is being more available for each other. When you get married, it's a whole different ballgame. So many marriages fail because this is what usually happens. Neither a husband or wife make time for each other. They don't make time for their family. They're too busy doing everything else other than being together. And then they just fall apart and they end up in divorce. That's why the divorce rate is, what, 60-something percent? If, kids, if you want to make money one day, go be a divorce law. I mean, it's crazy how high it is. But all I'm telling you is get closer together, make time for each other, be more available for each other, but mainly be more available for God. Because when you start working with God, you may think, well, if I'm going to start doing all this for God, I ain't going to have time for my family. No. When you live for God, you will make time for your family. And your family will respect you more than they've ever seen. And you'll be able to love like you've never been able to love. You'll be able to actually open up and take the walls off of your heart and give it to your family. And you can trust in each other. And you can love each other. And you put faith in each other when you become more available for God. That's what we've got to do. So this is kind of a part two to the message I did a few weeks ago about being a disciple. So today, we've got to start being more available for God. And when we make be more available for God, our works will be shown by the congregation. People will start seeing your works when you start making an effort to do more. I've got to do more. I'm going to start doing more. And I hope I'm not here for God to be seen. For y'all tap me on the back and say, well, good job, Zach, for doing all this extra. But I hope that people see that I'm making an effort. Maybe others will start making more making an effort. I see other people working really hard at the church, doing this extra stuff. It inspires me to want to do that stuff. They don't do it for glory. They do it for God, for the glory of God. So we can do more in this church. We're about to have this business meeting here in a few weeks. We're going to buy more chairs. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold the people that's going to come here. But I believe that if a congregation gets on fire, and I believe we're on that way, and we've been on that way, and we had so many people get saved last year, we can move mountains. House of Worship has something so special here. We have such a loving family here. We preach out of the Bible. We teach out of the Bible. And we all just love God, and we want better for each other. And we just want to love each other. And that's what it's all about. This is what God, the church, is all about. So today... Start getting in your own little ministry. Find out what God is wanting you to do. And invite people and bring people in. If one or two people can't grow a church, it takes a church to grow a church. So we've got to grow together. So I've talked to the Christians this morning. I've talked to the, somebody who may be trying to reevaluate your life. So you can be living for God and be happy. But like I said, being more available, it will bless you even more. 
but I've already, I think, gotten my point across. Now I want to talk to the lost person this morning. Real brief. John 3, 16. Because I believe any message, no matter where you come from, you need to lead back to Jesus and lead somebody to the cross. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him shall be saved. You know, I, I got my two kids right there. I could sacrifice their life for you. I could. I'm sorry, I love you all. Now I jump in a bullet. Now if somebody come in here, I try to defend your life. But I will sacrifice my kids for you. God loves us so much that He sacrificed His Son for us. He didn't have to do it. But He loves us and He did it. And Jesus went to the cross just a few years older than me. I'm about to be 30. Jesus was 33 and a half and He went to that cross and He died for us. And imagine hearing that hammer come on that when He was hitting them stakes on His hand. Imagine the pain as it entered into His hands. He was doing it. He was thinking about me. And you imagine when they crossed His legs and they put that spike into His shins and they was beating it in there. Imagine when they put that cross up there and put it in the hole, the joke that it went down in His back right. Imagine the, the, He can't breathe. Imagine the, the blood. Imagine the crown of thorns. Imagine the embarrassment. He did that for me and you. And because He did that, I got saved at nine years old. Because He did that, He had forgave me of all my sins. Because He did that, my Maddox is saved. Because He did that, my wife is saved. Because He that the majority of my family is saved and we're going to go to a better place one day. This place is getting worse down here but there's better up there and that's what I'm working for. That's what I'm living for and I hope that y'all get on fire today and want more in your life. I want more of you, Jesus, in my life. I don't want a mediocre life. I want more of you, Jesus, and I want people to have more in their life. I want you to get excited today. If you're lost, today can be the day that your life changes. The day can be the day that you come up here and you ask Jesus and to your heart. Today can be the day that you break away from the chains of sin. Today can be the day when you walk out of that prison. See, right now if you're lost, you're stuck in a prison cell. Jesus has already paid the bail for when he went and died on the cross, but you're sitting there. But he's the key that's going to get you out. And the only way you're going to open up that jail cell is coming up here today and asking him into your heart. Yes. Jesus, please save me. I know you died on the cross. I love you, Jesus. I want y'all to stand up. If you're lost, I will pray for you. If you're going through a hard time, I'll pray with you. If you want to be more available for God, I will pray with you. God bless y'all.